Mabuhay and welcome. I am Fred Pontilias. I'm a science teacher at the John D. O'Brien School of Mathematics and Science, Boston Public Schools. Right behind me is the Charles River, or as Bostonians fondly call it, the Charles. Winner of the 2011 Tees International River Prize for the cleanest urban river in the United States. Well, that was certainly a long way from the time when a 1966 hit song, Dirty Water, immortalized the then famously polluted river. Well, I love that dirty water. Oh, Boston, you're my home. Saturday, July 2013, was a historic day for the Charles. On that day, the first organized public community swim on the river since the 1950s was held on the Lower Charles. This momentous turnaround from a possible sad footnote in the history of environmental degradation to a great example of environmental rehabilitation was due to the concerted efforts of the Charles River Conservancy and various public and private partners. This initiative resulted in significantly improving the water quality of the river. Well, one wonders if all of this effort would have been for nothing had the uh, rehabilitation effort been done at too late a time when the Charles River would have been irredeemably broken, biologically dead, or even worse. This reminds me of the Cuyahoga River the river in Ohio that caught fire due to severe pollution from factory effluent and other debris. This was not the first time that the river had caught fire. Fires occurred on the Cuyahoga River many times before. Even with rehabilitation, Cuyahoga River is still considered polluted. Considering the two examples, one can see that there is an element of time when dealing with environmental problems. If addressed too late, it might be very difficult, if not impossible, to solve the problem. In such a case, you have reached a tipping point. Think of a lever balanced on a fulcrum and how this balance can be disrupted. In this lesson, we will explore the concept of ecological tipping points. And we will start with an activity that will relate a personal problem to the issue of tipping points. Think of a problem that you or your family might have experienced and that you were able to solve. What was the problem? What caused the problem? And how did you solve the problem? For the next activity, you will use the flowchart given to you by your teacher. Welcome back. We have now moved into a classroom here at MIT. In your analysis of the flow chart of your personal problems, you might have noticed that reaching a point of no return or a tipping point could result in two things. First, it might result to increasing the likelihood of the consequence. In that case, that's a positive tip. Or, alternatively, it could result to decreasing the likelihood of the consequence, a negative tip. I am using the word consequence as a synonym for the word outcome. Tipping points are consequences of the action that one takes to solve a problem. It could be either positive or negative. Think of a seesaw that is balanced, as shown in the illustration. If the load on side A becomes slightly heavier, side B will tip upwards. This is an example of a positive tip. If the load on side A becomes slightly lighter, side B will tip downwards. This is an example of a negative tip. To give a real-life environmental example, let us take the case of rainwater harvesting in Rajasthan, India. Years of deforestation have led to erosion, which led to filling up with silt, johads, water collection tanks traditionally used to collect rainwater. 
Low water supply led the communities to use deep wells powered by diesel-powered pumps to access underground water. This modern technology led to even more depletion of the water supply. Rivers, ponds drying up completely and aquifers severely depleted, which led to even more vegetation loss, more erosion. A vicious cycle leading to even more scarcity of water supply was created. In the mid-1980s, through the initiative of Rajendra Singh, a local doctor who saw the potential of rebuilding Johads as a solution to the water shortage. This proved to be the solution that stopped the vicious cycle started by deforestation, enabling the water supply and eventually the ecosystem to recover. In this scenario, the positive tipping point is the rebuilding of the Johads. The negative tipping point is the deforestation that precipitated the vicious cycle. As we proceed with the lesson, think about the personal problem that you worked on in the first activity. How is the problem by itself and how it unfolded similar to the Rajasthan example? On the screen now, you will see information about the Rajasthan case study. Your teacher will distribute these charts to you so you can compare that case study to your own problem. Welcome back. Were you able to find parallels between the problem you had and the Rajasthan case study? Now, let us turn to the idea of using feedback loops or mechanisms to understand how a complex problem works. Feedback loops are the key to understanding how tipping points work. As you have seen before, tipping points can start a cascade of effects that can either reverse the vicious cycles that uh, are responsible for a problem, or in other words, a positive tipping point, or it can make those vicious cycles worse, a negative tipping point. Feedback loops explain why vicious cycles are so hard to break. This is because circular chains of cause and effect amplify small negative causes into large negative effects. But feedback loops also expose the strategic points at which the vicious negative cycles can be reversed. In this lesson, you will learn how to use feedback diagrams to analyze a complex problem by identifying strategic interventions that can stop and reverse a negative vicious cycle. We use feedback mechanisms all the time in our daily lives, although we might not be conscious about it. For example, in your studies, you might have noticed your grades slipping. If the main reason for this is because you are slacking, you might have changed your behavior and put more effort into studying. As a consequence, your grades most probably improved. Or you might have decided not to do anything, not change your behavior, or worse, to become even more disengaged. And that probably resulted to even more disastrously low grades. Our bodies maintain homeostasis by feedback mechanisms. Your body temperature, for example, is maintained within a narrow range by physiological mechanisms. If it gets too hot, we start sweating. Evaporation of sweat from our skin cools our body. If it gets too cold, one response is to shiver, which increases heat production in our muscles. Similar to feedback mechanisms in our bodies, feedback diagrams help us analyze how individual actions play a role in the development of either a negative or positive tipping point. In the next activity, you will analyze the uh, problem, the personal issue that you had in activity one using the feedback diagrams that your teacher will distribute. 
You will have to identify the steps or events involved in both negative and positive tips and show cause and effect relationships between the steps or events using arrows. It might be helpful here to look at the handouts you have from the Rajasthan case study to get a sense of how feedback diagrams are developed. Share your work with the class and I'll see you in a while. Welcome back! How did you do with your feedback diagrams? I will now introduce you to a new environmental case study from the island of Palawan in the Philippines where I grew up. You will watch a video of a real-life environmental issue in the province of Palawan in the Philippines. Palawan in the Western Philippines is considered to be the last frontier, an environmental paradise of the Philippines. As with many places in developing countries, the demands between environmental protection and human survival often come in conflict. The waters in and around Tai Tai Palawan had long been considered to be one of the major fishing areas in the Philippines. Tai Tai has a 2010 population of about 71,000, approximately 70% of which is dependent on fishing. People from neighboring municipalities and even other provinces also ply the waters of the town for commercial fishing. In the case of the Tai Tai case study, the focus is on the live reef fish trade, or LTRF. There has been a major concern about this fishery resource. The live reef fish trade begins with catching reef fish and keeping them alive, from their sources to the restaurants that serve them, mostly in Hong Kong and mainland China. Live reef fish have long been a luxury food item around Southeast Asia, and the industry is worth nearly a billion dollars annually. The trade's history involves a vicious cycle that has been depleting local fisheries in a widening net across the region. At the onset, fish caught in the wild are exported straight to the market. As plate-sized fish are diminished, increasingly smaller fish are caught and reared in cages until they reach marketable size. A slew of problems is associated with the trade, including the fact that fish are caught before they reach reproductive age. As a boom or bust business, the LRFT only provides additional income for a limited time until the stocks are depleted and new sources must be found. Severely depleted fish stocks can threaten local food security and undermine incomes in the long run. The dwindling supply of fish pushes commercial fishermen to use more destructive fishing practices. The problem with these fishing methods is that they severely deplete the resource by destroying the habitat. As less and less fish get harvested, the more widespread the use of these practices become because less and less fish are being harvested. This tremendous pressure on the fishery resources has, of course, resulted in some negative consequences. While the main problem is overfishing, the area has suffered from destructive fishing practices such as the use of dynamite, cyanide, and muruami, a fishing technique where the coral reef is pounded to scare out hiding fish. For the next activity, you will work in groups to develop a flowchart for this Tai Tai Fisheries case study. You will have to analyze the case study in terms of the causes, effects, possible solutions, and identify negative and positive tipping points. I will see you in a couple of minutes. And so, how do we deal with a problem like this? 
As with any problem, it is essential to recognize that the problem exists. In 1998, the World Wildlife Fund for Nature became interested in this ecological sensitive area of Tai Tai. And so, beginning in 2003, the live fish trade for food industry was profiled. Let us now take a look at how the issue of sustaining the fishery resource in Tai Tai was handled by the stakeholders. Across the years since the alarm was sounded, different measures were implemented by enforcement, policy, and industry participants. This range from a ban in fish shipments for a period of time to catch size restrictions. However, current and time series data point to an ever decreasing community of reef fish species that are used in the food industry. The long-term goal of the municipal government of Tai Tai is to improve the livelihoods and industries of Tai Taianios while conserving and enhancing the production capacity of its natural resources. Research and studies continue to enhance policies on the LRFT, Marine Protected Areas, or MPAs, and the Fishery Code. Some major steps include the designation of marine zones, including core or no-touch zones that are important to ecological processes, fishery reserves, community-managed MPAs, mariculture areas, recreational areas, and multiple-use zones. The required registration of all fishers, fishing boats, and equipment, and working towards sustainable management of fisheries through such devices as a traceability and certification system for all marine products coming from Tai Tai to ensure that the means of collection or rearing are legal and environment friendly and the products are sourced from a managed area. In the next activity, I would like you to analyze the Tai Tai environmental case study using feedback diagrams. I would like you to identify a positive tipping point and a negative tipping point. And also, I would like you to identify the series of events and consequences that came about as a result of the tipping point. Welcome back. Now that you've worked on the problem, let us see how the stakeholders and the people of Tai Tai took care of their fishery resource using a feedback diagram. As complex and multifaceted as the Tai Tai case is, things were done that positively addressed this very difficult situation. Government and non-government groups provided technical assistance and collaborated with local stakeholders. The relationship between the local government and the World Wildlife Fund was an essential element of success. Scientific research done by the World Wildlife Fund produced information that informed resource management decisions. Local autonomy is essential. The local government was tasked to implement the various programs and regulations related to the local fishery industry. At the end of the day, the solution to the problem should not depend on programs that have outside funding, for example. The success of the program should not be subject to the vagaries of funding availability, which is limited anyway from outside institutions. Existence of local funding and other resources give the local government more authority to implement fishery laws and regulations and greater incentive to make the effort work. I hope that you all enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed creating it. Many of the issues and problems of our times are very complex and I hope that you learned concepts and strategies from this lesson that will help you and guide you as you participate in finding solutions to these problems. I would like to dedicate this lesson to the people of Palawan your 
blessed with so much natural resources and may you all work together to manage them sustainably. And to my late father, engineer Olpiano and Pontilias, who held MIT in the highest regard. Thank you all. Well, I am very much delighted uh, for your interest in uh, considering uh, using this lesson in your classroom. I think the topic that uh, this particular lesson covers is such, you know, of immediate importance. You know, ecological tipping points, uh, it's really very important, especially with all the problems and issues that we are encountering in our world today. If I see a prerequisite for your students, I think what is important is their ability to uh, see the relationships between causes and effects. Because this is really, if you look at the lesson, this is really what the lesson is about. Now, in terms of ecological tipping points, again, it is very, very important in, you know, especially if you're thinking about sustainable solutions to environmental problems. And, you know, we, there's, there's really an immediacy to this, uh, to this issue. I mean, uh, tipping points, once you reach it, and then there's no point, you know, if you reach a point of no return, uh, that could be a really big problem. And I think by doing this lesson with young students, I mean, the younger they are, to, you know, the younger they are exposed to these things, I think it is actually so much better. Now, in order to analyze these natural systems that, you know, well, let's face it, if we're considering uh, natural systems, systems in the natural world, these things can be very complex. And what my lesson, what this lesson is trying to provide is to give you or give the students some sort of a template on how to analyze these very complex problems. So uh, you're going to be using flowcharts and uh, in the form of feedback diagrams and you can use this in the analysis of the uh, of case studies. So um, to uh, make a long story short, this activity will provide an opportunity for students to study the concept of ecological tipping points and analyze and propose solutions to these environmental problems using this particular template that I'm trying to provide. Now, the lesson actually covers several activities. And uh, the uh, one way that I thought of, uh, you know, how do we uh, engage students in the lesson is for them to think about, think of a personal problem and think of how they dealt with it. So from that perspective, we build that into something that is maybe out of their experience. So in this case, a particular environmental problem or case study. So I think, you know, because of that, if they are able to see the, uh, the um, similarities in the process of problem solving, so one is personal, the other one is a more complex environmental study, I think, you know, they will learn the, uh, you know, the message of this lesson uh, more effectively. Now, to uh, aid uh, your students, in the analysis of an environment, environmental problem, um, I am presenting a uh, particular case study that comes from um, the place where I was born. And um, it's about uh, live fish trade in a town in Palawan, Philippines. And, uh, you know, for me, it actually resonates because I am from there, but I think this particular problem obviously is not an isolated case. I am pretty sure that problems with fishery resources, you know, is present in many places around the world. Now, the good thing about this lesson is, of course, as an extension, what you might do is to actually look for specific environmental problems that are you know, um, problems that are particular to the uh, 
the, the, the place or places where the students are from. And I think, you know, if, if you're able to do that as an extension, that would be a wonderful thing because, again, uh, you, we are putting now this particular, uh, the, uh, the, this particular strategy, we're putting it in a different context. And then, again, this is a context that, you know, hopefully will be close to the experience of your students. Now, for a higher level, upper level students, another extension might be to uh, actually create a writing and argumentation exercise. So what you can do here is, uh, if there's, you know, if there's a particular uh, environmental problem that was identified, uh, what they can do is they can select a particular solution and then provide evidence on why they think that particular solution is going to be effective. And of course, they will base their decision and the evidence, they will base it on their analysis of the different issues that um, you know, are part of that particular problem. So again, thank you very much for considering this particular lesson. And you know, I'm really very open to suggestions if, and questions. If you need to clarify anything or if you think that you know, some parts of the lesson can be modified to make it more effective. I will appreciate it if you, uh, you know, get in touch with me and uh, you can, um, I'll, I have my contact information at the uh, MIT Blossoms website. So thank you very much.